Hi, oh, g'day guys. Welcome back to True Footy for the round three edition of Just the Tips. Hope you're all going well. Hope you're all enjoying the footy season so far. It's uh, been pretty action packed. Exciting round ahead. We've got a couple of derbies this weekend. We've obviously got the Western Derby over here in Perth and the showdown over in South Australia too. So a bit of a rivalry themed round this week. If you haven't got the memo yet, you may not realize that uh, I'm doing two videos a week now. Uh, I do an analysis video on the previous round on a Monday and Just the Tips is going to be a shortened condensed version uh, where I'm literally just going to be talking just the tips. It's an interesting round ahead, some big matchups in this particular week and uh, you kind of look at a few teams with an 0-2 record who, if they're not very careful, this season might get away from them before too long, which sounds crazy in round three, but 0-3 is not a position you want to have to come back from. As always guys, this video is sponsored by Manscaped.com. If you want 20% off and free shipping on their male grooming products, such as their, uh, their cologne, they do a bunch of stuff now. Yep, ball wipes as well. It's not just the shaving stuff, there's a heap of uh, liquid formulations you can enjoy as well so do us a favor and also do yourselves a favor by checking them out on manscaped.com if you use the code true 20 you get 20 percent off and free shipping on all their great products Honestly, it was a diabolical week for tipping uh, for myself last week. I, I noticed nobody in the league got a perfect nine last week. I myself scored four, which is horrendous. I dropped into the 200s or something. Hoping to come back this week with a big week, but we will shout out the weekly winners. Uh, the last round's winner was someone called Anita P, who picked eight tips correctly and the margin of one. So well done, Anita. But the overall leader is Santa's bagged six. Santa scored 17 out of a possible 18 tips correct right. Hasn't won a round yet, if I'm not mistaken, but leads the league by uh, two tips, which is quite impressive. Fantasy, on the other hand, uh, I am going quite poorly in that. I think I'm about 116th, but the overall leader is someone called Tony Horn with this team, Cracker Horn, with an average score of 2203, which is outstanding going in the opening two rounds. So well done to all of those winners. But now let's get into this round ahead and uh, let's see how many wrong I get this week. Guys, I was just editing that video and uh, realized how hard I felt for Anita P. Completely missed that. Completely missed that. Well played. So opening up Squiggle once again, uh, where I'll just uh, plug in my tips each week, and you can see the ladder change as well, which is quite exciting. It's quite strange to see Hawthorne and Collingwood top two. I wonder how long their runs will continue. But we'll start off with the first game of the round. The Western Bulldogs play Sydney. I think this is the third round consecutively where the Bulldogs have kicked us off uh, with the first game of the fixture. And it's a big game again. Western Bulldogs versus Sydney is two very good teams, potentially top four, although the Bulldogs are sitting at 0-2. And, and Sydney, on the other hand, are 2-0 up there in third. So last year, Sydney caused a boil over by uh, knocking off the Dogs at Marvel Stadium. But I do think that was kind of when the Dogs were a little bit down and out, a little bit down on form. But the Swans are playing terrific football. And uh, I said this in my analysis video, the Buddy Franklin kicking a 1,000 goals almost overshadowed the fact that Sydney just got a really, really good win over another potential contender. So perfect start to the season for them. They'll be looking to make it 3-0. They're coming up against the dog side that are 2-0. And, and this dog side, I obviously, they made the grand finals. I think they will potentially go deep again this year. Yeah, I seem to always catch the flow wrong on the Bulldogs. Every time I think they're going to be good, they go to shit. So uh, maybe I'm putting the mockers on them. But they haven't played poorly. They've played two fairly good teams in Melbourne and Carlton. And surely, surely they snap into gear for this game. So I, I think I'm going to have to tip the home team here. The Western Bulldogs to win by six points in a, uh, I think it's a Thursday night thriller this round. Then we have Melbourne playing Essendon at the MCG. This one's looking a little bit more one-sided to me. I don't know about you guys, but uh, Melbourne not looking too far off their premiership pace. Obviously a bit of a, a lower key sort of victory over the Suns at Metricon, but they're not easy to beat. Uh, I would keep going on about it, but they're but in Queensland early in the season, uh, the Suns are playing some fairly good football, so I don't really mark against Melbourne that they only uh, only won by the 13 points. Essendon, on the other hand, uh, were frustrating against Brisbane. They had their opportunities to, to really take a hold of that game and got out to a big lead but ultimately uh, kind of kept coughing up opportunities as quickly as they would come. And now Zach Merritt's out for six to eight weeks as well, which I think that's a big blow to their midfield. So I've captained Oliver for this particular game. Essendon have a, a bit of a habit of midfielders going big against them. So uh, by that logic, I, I think Melbourne's going to be far too strong here. They're going to win this by a good 28 points. Next up, we've got the showdown. Uh, Adelaide a coming off a fairly flat loss to Collingwood by 45 points at the G. But again, we don't really know what to make of Collingwood just yet. They lost at home narrowly to Fremantle. You give them a pass for that effort. They uh, they nearly came back and, and stole the game right at the end And against Collingwood. Again, I just feel like Collingwood have a lot more progressed than Adelaide are at the moment. So they're kind of going as expected for a rebuilding team. They shouldn't on paper, trouble Port too much. But Port are 0-2. And, uh, you know, they had a tough loss against Brisbane in round one. Thought they played okay. 
And then they got annihilated at home by Hawthorne. So I don't know. I, I kind of thought Port Adelaide didn't play horribly against Hawthorne. I, I just felt like it was one of those nights where everything was sort of coming off for Hawthorne. And Port's got some injuries. Uh, Aliyah Aliyah is he's talked about and Charlie Dixon up the other end as well. But even still. Surely, Port Adelaide, far too good for the Crows. They'll notch their first win of the season uh, by a th- 35 points, let's call it. Then we have uh, not a derby by uh, any stretch, really, but uh, the Giants are playing the Gold Coast Suns. So they're two expansion. This is the expansion cup. The Giants are 0-2, uh, looking fairly flat uh, against Richmond, to be honest. Uh, I thought they were amicable in defeat against the Swans, who were uh, probably just a, a better side, let's call it. Against Richmond, they had a big opportunity with some big outs. You know, no Prestia, no Dusty, but uh, unfortunately, they came against Richmond on a good day, and they were far too strong. But still, would have liked to see a little bit more fight from the Giants. Gold Coast Suns playing some solid footy. You know, beat an undermanned West Coast side at Optus. Not too sure how much to read into that, although, you know, you can't mark them harshly. And then really pressed the reigning premiers uh, at Metricon. It didn't really threaten to win, but obviously they stayed within punching distance uh, for the whole night. And they're playing some good form. They're capable of an upset here, but again, the Giants at 0 2. I don't, they're not going to take this game lightly. It's going to be, oh, there's, there's definitely upset potential here. This would be huge for the pressure on Leon Cameron if the, if he drops this, but surely, surely. I, I haven't seen enough for, for the Suns yet to really think they can take a big scout, but they can be dangerous. I'll say the Giants by 17 points. Next, we have the Pies and Ge- Geelong and uh, a bit of a hype around the Pies and perhaps rightfully so, looking far too good for Adelaide last week. Some of their youngsters uh, stepping up and doing well, although I noticed McCreary's out this week, which is a, a bit of a shame. Round one, they look far too good for St Kilda, although, uh, you know, as I talked about with St Kilda, I thought they were really poor this week. So nonetheless, good side, I reckon. Playing well, playing good football. Uh, Geelong, on the other hand, were great in round one by smashing Essendon. And then in uh, round two, not good enough to beat Sydney. But uh, again, that's a tough, tough road trip. Definitely chances for an upset here. But looking at the strength of opposition Collingwood's played, Geelong is a massive step up from those teams. Could be a good challenge for the, for the Cats, but I'm going to have to tip the favourites here to get the job done by about five goals, to be honest. I, th- I think Geelong will uh, play to the standard we expect. Next, we've got Brisbane and North Melbourne at the Gabba. The Lions have uh, looked scratchy at times this year so far, but ultimately got the job done against Port and Essendon in their first two games of the year. And uh, Lockie Neal, in particular, went nuts against Essendon. That was great to see. I-, I think they're a good team, and they've done enough to get by in the first two rounds. And uh, they should make light work of North. North came up against West Coast, and honestly... Maybe it was a bad day. Maybe a little bit harsh, but some of the football was awful in that game from both sides. But you, you got to mark North a little bit more harshly. A couple of injuries as well. LDU is gone for this week with a concussion. Taron Thomas is out for four to six, I think. I don't see much chance of an upset here. This would be a massive boil over if North won at the Gabba. Could be wrong. There is much sillier things have happened in football, but the Lions. They're far too good. I think they'll win this by about 40 points, to be honest. Carlton versus Hawthorne, the two hype teams out of Victoria at the moment uh, for both unexpectedly going 2-0 and playing some top-class football. Carlton have beaten Richmond, who are, you know probably look about mid-table side at the moment, and then beat the Dogs, who are, I still think should be a contender. And the Blues are playing very, very good footy as well. But Hawthorne played an immaculate performance in Round 2 against the Power, although it didn't kind of match up. Round 1, we didn't see it. In Round 2, it really clicked. So who are we more likely to rely on in this round? Oh, jeez. If Hawthorne play like they did against Port, and even if Carlton play like they did against the Dogs, Hawthorne will win this game. But I don't know if I can trust them to do it two weeks in a row. They could win this. It's pretty 50-50, and it would be huge for the winner. Either of these winners going 3-0 and is massive for their finals chances. No one really expected either side to play finals this year. I think I'm going to go with Carlton, though. I think I just trust them a little bit more, but I could look very silly for this one. I'll say Carlton in a thriller by 12 points. The Saints then played Richmond uh, at Marvel Stadium, and um, yeah, not a simple tip this one. St Kilda, poor in round one against the Pies. Pretty poor against Fremantle too, to be honest. They kind of got away with one, and it was largely off the back of a couple of forwards in Higgins and, and King playing really well in particular. So they do have that potential with Max King, uh, in good form. That's a huge wild card for this game, and that's a player that will be hard to stop for for any club. Richmond, on the other hand, responded really well to losing to Carlton uh, with the you know some of the adversity they have with Prestia and Martin out, and uh, and you know perhaps a lack of depth like I've talked about. They uh, their their system looks still really strong. My head says Richmond here, 
But St. Kilda do have this uh, this knack. I, I think they have a knack for beating Richmond. I could be wrong on that, but I feel like head-to-head -head they match up pretty well, which makes me nervous to tip Richmond. But I, I think I rate Richmond higher. I think I've seen better football from Richmond. So if we're tipping on logic, I'm going to say the Tigers win this by uh, even 20 points. Then we have the Derby. Oh, God. I, I, I don't know how much you can assess from West Coast so far this year. It's like we haven't seen the the team play together properly. You know, it's been a makeshift team two weeks in a row and a different makeshift team from week one to week two. So, yes, there was a lot of spirit and fight, um, but that doesn't necessarily mean that the best 22 when they're all together is necessarily going to be, you know, a good team again. I, I'm optimistic it will, but... Uh, there's no data I can really roll off here, although I do think there has been some positive signs in terms of game style and intent uh, and tackling in particular that's massively improved. So I'm optimistic, but not much to go off so far. Fremantle, on the other hand, have played some dire football this year. Let's be real, and I think even their, their fans are saying that. Didn't catch much of the Adelaide Fremantle game, but uh, much was said about Fremantle's really poor third quarter. And then other than maybe a good first quarter against St Kilda, they completely went to sleep and really had no response for St Kilda, who honestly I didn't think were playing that well. So it was one of the more disappointing Fremantle performances I'd seen in some time. And in theory, their side is better now. I, I do wonder if they're just relying too much on a very young midfielder with Sean Darcy there. He ended up getting injured and then maybe that cost them the game. I'm not sure. Andrew Brayshaw is carrying the team on his back, particularly that midfield at the moment. There's no Fife. There's no Mundy. Chair is out. Look, I intend to do a, a video maybe closer to the Derby uh, to give my prediction because put it this way, I think if West Coast have their team or something resembling a team, let's call it two thirds of a team, I think they're good enough to beat Fremantle, to be honest, from what I've seen. But Fremantle have this knack, uh, I think, or have this potential, I think, to really lift for the Derby after a really poor performance and they could come out and play really well. Oh, this tip it depends entirely on the teams that are announced because if, if it's a top up team, forget about it, Fremantle win. But I, I'm going to put, I'm going to say West Coast because I do just have a feeling we're going to win. But they're subject to change. So uh, maybe keep an eye out for my uh, my video about the Derby closer to the game later in the week if you're interested. All right, guys, there you have it. That is my predictions for round three. Some really tough ones in there. Second week in a row, found it very, very hard to pick. Uh, and last week didn't go so well. So there's a few 50-50s there I'm really not confident about. Um, but uh, yeah, we'll see. As per my predictions, we've got three undefeated teams, Brisbane, Melbourne, and Carlton at the end of this round, uh, while Adelaide and Essendon remain winless for me. Essendon on the bottom of the ladder there, that, uh, that is dire. But as always, guys, I welcome your opinion in the comment section of this video. Let me know what you thought of my tips, what you would have done differently, and uh, maybe, maybe your upset of the round this week. For me, upset of the round is probably Gold Coast to beat the Giants. I think there's serious potential there, but I, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bet safe and, and tip GWS. Game in the round for me. I'm really looking forward to Carlton Hawthorne. I'm intrigued as to see how that game goes down. But let me know what your nominations are in the comments. As always, guys, if you're enjoying the comment, please consider subscribing to the channel. Uh, but otherwise, just look out for the next video, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.